Hello, in today's video we're going to talk about new features in Prisma Access version 1.6. My name is Evan Saftia, Technical Marketing Manager for Prisma Access here at Palo Alto Networks, and I'm joined by Carmen Clementelli, Product Marketing Manager for Prisma SaaS and Data Loss Prevention. The new features we'll be covering in this video include inline data loss prevention, secure inbound access, multiple BGP peers, DNS proxy support for remote networks, DNS enhancements for mobile users, and the directory sync service. And with that, I'll hand it over to Carmine to talk to us about data loss prevention. With Prisma Access 1.6, we're releasing a great functionality called Enterprise Data Loss Prevention, or DLP. It's a new subscription. DLP is used for uh, these uh, big problems that customers have around their data. Data breaches, because DLP can identify, classify PII and intellectual property and can stop data exfiltration. It's used for uh, compliance. DLP can assist for GDPR, CCPA compliance, but also PCI, DSS, HIPAA, SOX, and many others. And DLP can also prevent malicious and um, um, malicious behavior, but also user mistakes, exposing sensitive data. DLP in uh, Prisma Access is a built-in service. It covers uh, consistently every location, every device, including branch and mobile users. Um, and it's uh, discovering sensitive data in motion when data is transversing the network and is going to the cloud. The policy is consistent everywhere and there is low operation cost because the service is embedded in Prisma Access. So we're going from uh, limited data protection capabilities that we have already built in in our firewalls from 35 built-in patterns to a cloud deliver enterprise grade DLP. And this cloud deliver because we want easy adoption for our customers, and no additional product to manage, and consistent protection and scale, scalability. It's one DLP service for all of Palo Alto Networks products. So it's a shared service. It's available right now in Prisma Access, but also in Prisma SaaS, and will be available soon for other products like Prisma Cloud and Next Gen Firewalls. There is a consistent policy everywhere data is because the policy is defined in a place like Prisma Access and automatically synchronized everywhere else, like in Prisma SaaS. It's embedded capability. That means that there is no product additionally standalone to manage for our customers. So there is no additional console, no, um, um, no deployment. And also, it's automated and powered by machine learning. DLP can automatically detect, identify, classify sensitive data, but uh, the action that you can see in Prisma, in Prisma Access are block and alert. So you can simply alert users for their mistakes so they, they don't uh, repeat them again to reduce risk over time. But you can also block when uh, data is really sensitive. The specific capabilities besides the no servers, no deployment, no ICAP, no proxies, and the auto sync everywhere covers data profiles for GDPR, CCPA, PII, etc. The DLP right now covers 250 plus predefined data patterns and it has proximity features. So you can define proximity keywords to reduce false positives. There are Boolean operations. There is confidence levels that you can define, and there is weighted regex. And the use case, again, is data in motion. The uh, supported files for Prisma Access DLP are PDF, MS Office, CSV, RTF. The maximum si size of files supported is 20 megabytes. The supported apps are any web browsing, and also specifically Slack uploading, Gmail, SharePoint, and Box. The DLP use cases for Prisma Access are mainly two. So Prisma Access covers data in motion, so it can discover and protect sensitive data in terms of blocking data leakage, 
Also can monitor only the uploads to a sanctioned and unsanctioned cloud apps. So organizations can monitor these uploads, at least they're, they're aware of sensitive data going to those apps. In Prisma SaaS, the use case is different because Prisma SaaS DOP covers data at rest. So that is data stored in SaaS applications like Office 365 OneDrive or Box. Thanks, Carmine. Next, we have secure inbound access. This feature will let customers deploy Prisma Access as a front end and allow partners and non-organizational users to access applications and devices hosted at a remote network site. So this is available with select locations, including the UK, and the Panorama UI will automatically update the list to show possible locations for inbound access. So this allows access to custom apps and on-prem devices using all ports and protocols for not partners and non-organizational users. There's support for security profiles, including SSL inspection, and access policies will be required in order to create access. This requires a dedicated remote network tunnel. An existing remote network cannot be used. It has to be a separate tunnel to that location. And each inbound tunnel allows up to 100 applications and requires a remote network license. This is not suitable for high volume apps. So just a quick view into what this looks like, right? So you have a remote network that connects through Prisma Access to provide internet security. If you wanted to allow inbound access, you would create a secondary tunnel that allows access from the internet for non-organizational users to resources located within that branch location. And in this instance, uh, we have ports 443 and 3389 that are open for access for these users. Now what this looks like to onboard within Panorama, if you see the onboarding remote network window that is up on the screen, uh, there's an inbound access tab, it's which you would configure this feature. Please note that each one will consume a remote network license, depending on how many IPs you configure will depend on how much the bandwidth allocation is required. So just a quick side-by-side -side against clientless VPN and under which circumstances you might want to use either feature. Clientless VPN supports user ID and authentication where inbound access does not. Both provide applications over HTML, but inbound access provides all ports and protocols, but requires a dedicated IPsec tunnel. Multiple BGP peers. So this has um, been added to facilitate dynamic failover between two different BGP peers. Remote networks and service connections are supported. And this is what it's going to look like in Panorama, right? So this is what it used to look like, and this is the new view of how you would configure it. So you have the primary WAN and the secondary WAN options now. So today, Prisma Access cannot facilitate dynamic tunnel failover if the on-prem devices do not use the same IP address for BGP peering. This feature allows peering with up to two on-prem BGP peers so that dynamic failover can take place. This is available for both remote networks and service connections. DNS proxy. So by default, Prisma Access for remote networks sends all DNS requests to customer DNS servers. So internal servers must handle you know, public domains as well. Moving forward, you'll be able to use DNS proxy where DNS requests for internet traffic are sent to public DNS servers while internal DNS is used for internal applications. DNS enhancements for mobile users. By default, Prisma Access will proxy all DNS requests for mobile users, which means the source IP of the DNS request will be the IP address of the gateway to which the user is connected to. This prevents customers from implementing source IP based DNS policies or identify a compromised endpoint based on source IP of the DNS request. When a customer sends all their DNS requests to their internal DNS server, Prisma Access does not act as a DNS proxy. This 
the DNS request sent by the DNS server would have the source IP of the mobile user's endpoint. This enables customers to implement source IP-based DNS policies or perform DNS-based forensics to identify a compromised endpoint. DNS proxy configuration for mobile users. In this case, if you were to set the DNS server to same as internal domains, this will disable the DNS proxy. Directory sync service. The directory sync service is a feature that allows you to reduce the number of LDAP queries to the on-premise Active Directory server. Simplifies adoption for Prisma Access for new customers. Supported currently is uh, on-prem Active Directory and LDAP. Now, you have to note that this does not eliminate the requirement to have a master device, which is either a you know, PA series or VM series firewall that is used to synchronize users and groups to Panorama in order to create user group-based policies. So in order to use the directory sync service, you'll download the agent from the hub and install it on the Active Directory host. You'll follow the instructions on the agent where you click on get certificate on the hub and generate a new certificate for mutual authentication between the agent and the DSS service in the cloud. Next, you'll configure Panorama. So you'll follow the steps provided under the group mapping settings. Directory sync for mobile users and remote networks must be enabled individually. Commit will fail if DSS is not activated and associated on the hub. Thank you for watching this quick video on the new features of Prisma Access 1.6. My name is Evan Safkia. I'm the Technical Marketing Manager here at Palo Alto Networks.